The Prophet Muhammad is one of the main prophets in Islam and is highly revered by Muslims from all around the world. But who exactly is the Prophet Muhammad and what are some of the key events in his life that have made him such a central figure within the Muslim religion? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and also welcome to any of you who are watching FTD Facts for the first time. In this episode, I'll be exploring 10 surprising and interesting facts about the Prophet Muhammad. So make sure you watch all the way until the end because I don't want you to miss any of these details. Muhammad is the central prophet and final prophet of Islam. He was born in Mecca in 570 and most of his early life was spent as a merchant. At the age of 40, that's when he began to have revelations from Allah that became the basis for the Quran as well as the foundation of the Islamic religion. By 630, he had unified most of Arabia under a single religion and the Prophet Muhammad had a huge influence in the world and we have evidence of this because at the time of filming this episode, yeah, there's over 1.8 billion Muslims all around the world from different branches, Sunni, Shia, as well as other branches who identify under the banner of Islam. Muhammad's father had passed away before he was even born and he was raised first by his grandfather and then by his uncle. He belonged to a poor yet a respectable family of the Quraysh tribe and the family was very active in Meccan politics as well as trade. Now in his early teen years, Muhammad worked in a camel caravan and he gained a lot of experience in commercial trade while traveling to Syria and eventually from the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean. Muhammad earned the nickname Al Amin, and that means faithful or trustworthy because he was such a hard worker, people could trust him, they could depend on him. Also, in his early 20s, Muhammad began working for a wealthy merchant woman named Khadija, who was 15 years older than he was, and she soon became very attracted to Muhammad and she eventually proposed to him. And here's the thing, he accepted and they had several children together. He had two boys with Khadija, but sadly they had passed away. And the passing away of the Prophet Muhammad's sons has been viewed as being a sign from God to the Muslim community in regard to it not causing any sort of confusion about the succession of the prophethood as a family inheritance from the Prophet Muhammad. There's a whole lot more I could say about that, but let's move on to some more facts. Muhammad was monogamous for 25 years when he was married to his first wife, Khadija, and then after she passed away in 619 CE, he over time married a number of women and nine plus wives in total, and most of them were widows. Now the reason for these marriages was to provide for them and create strong family bonds. Also one thing to note is that many of the tribes at the time living in the Arabian Peninsula were nomadic tribes. And most of these tribes were polytheistic, worshipping their own set of gods. Now the town of Mecca was a very important trading and religious center. The most famous site was the Kaaba and it was believed to have been built by the Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael. Now the Prophet Muhammad was also a very religious person. During one of his pilgrimages in 610, he was meditating in a cave on Mount Jabal al-Nur and the angel Gabriel appeared and shared a message from God to him and he said, recite in the name of the Lord who creates. Creates man from clot. Recite for your Lord is most generous. These are the words that are believed to have come directly from God through the angel Gabriel to the prophet Muhammad and these words became the opening verses of Surah 96 of the Quran. And then soon after beginning to share this experience with others, Muhammad began to gather a very small following and when his message that he was sharing actually condemned idol worship and pointed to one God, many of the people of Mecca as well as the leaders of Mecca began to see Muhammad and his message as a big threat. You're like, what is he doing? He's interrupting our religious practice, our culture. Uh-uh, this can't happen anymore. And increasingly, the resistance to the Prophet Muhammad and his followers grew and they were eventually forced to emigrate from Mecca to Medina in 622. This marks the beginning of the Muslim calendar. There, the Prophet Muhammad was instrumental in bringing an end to a civil war raging amongst several of the city's tribes. Prophet Muhammad settled in the city of Mecca and he built his Muslim community there and it gradually gathered a lot more acceptance and followers. Now, between the 
the years 624 and 628, the Muslims were involved in a series of battles. In the final major battle known as the Battle of the Trench and Siege of Medina, the Prophet Muhammad and his followers won and a treaty was signed. The treaty was broken by the Meccan allies a year later though, but by that time the Prophet Muhammad had plenty of forces and the balance of power had shifted away from the Meccan leaders. In the year 630, the Muslim army marched into Mecca and took over the city and most of the Meccan population converted to Islam after that. The Prophet Muhammad and his followers then proceeded to destroy all of the statues of the pagan gods in and around the Kaaba. Alright guys, so that's all I have for you in this episode of 10 surprising and interesting facts about the life of the Prophet Muhammad. Now it was very interesting exploring this topic with you. Thanks for joining me here and now it's time to hear from you guys. Sound off down below in the comment section all your thoughts, all your opinions, all your questions. I look forward to continuing the conversation down there. Now if you enjoyed this episode, check out this annotation right here. It should be another video that's similar to this one. You'll love it, trust me. My social media links are also below in the video description section so you can follow me, see what I'm up to over there. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our daily episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode and I can't wait to see you next time.